everybody, welcome back to this next episode of Kaufman Analytics. Let's talk about this latest release from Microsoft Excel, Lambda Functions. What they are, how they work, and how we can use them in our day-to-day -day operations. As you can see here, the Lambda Calculus is an elegant notation for working with functions of happy locations to arguments. Stop! Wait, no, we're not doing any math today. Hold on. We're going to keep this really simple. You know that when you work with it, Microsoft Excel, there's a, a million canned functions out there, a million that come with Microsoft Excel. You've got sum and if, or, and, vlookup, hlookup, sum if, if error, et cetera, et cetera. But what if you wanna build your own function, your own user-defined function? Previous to Lambda existing, you needed to use VBA for that. You needed to write some code, but no more. Lambda allows you to write your own custom functions without any code whatsoever. And you only need two pieces of information, your input names and your calculation. In other words, the relationship between those input names. Let's take a look at a really simple example here. Go ahead and if you have the latest version of Microsoft Excel 365, open up an Excel workbook. And to begin, you're just gonna type equals lambda open parentheses. Here's where we have to define our parameters. So I'm going to say x and y. Now I'm going to define the relationship that I want to establish between x and y. So I'm just going to say x plus y. Now I'm going to close my parentheses and then I'm going to open up a new, new bracket here. And I'm going to say that I want to add 2 and 3. And you see that the answer is 5. My x and y can also live outside of my lambda. I'm going to go ahead and type um, 2 here and 3 in column D4. And then I'm going to change this so that these integers are not in the function expression itself, but now reference other cells. D3, D4, and it gives me five. The thing about lambdas is that they're what are called anonymous functions, right? But what if we wanna give this function a name so that we can use it later on? All we'd have to do is go up here in formulas and define name, and then we're going to give this a name. Let's call it add me. This will be our addition formula. And then down here, the important piece is it refers to, and we're going to type our lambda expression, equals lambda x and y, x plus y, and we're going to click OK there. Now we have a reusable formula that we can, that we can use anytime we want without having to type that whole lambda expression over again. So we've just typed our add me, and then let's say I wanna add 543 and 6001. Close my expression, and there we have it. Our answer is 6544. Um, this is obviously a really trivial example. So let's take a look at a slightly more complex example here. Here are some finance formulas that are, that are commonly used within banks, within accounting, what have you. So we've got some finance ratios here, right? Debt to equity, price to earning ratio, earnings per share, return on equity, net profit margin. And up top here, you see some raw data that I pulled straight from uh, the SEC website. So the closing price on February 25th was $117 for Northern, the Northern Trust Corporation. Here's the market cap, the shareholder equity, long-term debt, shares outstanding, net income for the fourth quarter of 2021, and the net income for the entire year of 2021, and then the revenue for the fourth quarter of 2021, again. So these are kind of some raw ingredients, but if we mix these up and combine them, we can get these equity ratios. So... Here's how you would just do it in, in Excel. I mean, they're not complex by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, this debt to equity ratio is just the total debt divided by shareholders' equity. The PE ratio is just the share price uh, divided by the earnings per share. So this isn't exactly rocket science. 
and we could easily do these in, um, in Excel. But let's take a look at what they would look like if we created lambdas for them so that we could reuse them at any time that we want. So if we type lambda, and then we're gonna do, uh, let's see, total debt and shareholders equity. And then let's define the rate relationship between these two. We'll say TD divided by SE, and then D5 and C5. So we've just rewritten this very simple equation in a lambda. Why would we wanna do that? Well, I'll show you. Let's define a name here. Let me copy this, make my life easier. Let's define a name, and we're just gonna call this debt to equity. Put a comment there, just called debt to equity ratio, and then we're gonna say it refers to this lambda function. And now over here, if we ever wanna reuse that, we can simply say equals debt to equity, and then we need to put our two parameters in, D5 and C5, and it gives us the, the correct output. So this is a really, really simple example, but in finance and accounting, you get some really gnarly long formulas, right? So this is, this is an example where there's only two inputs, but what if we had 12? Do you really wanna retype an equation, a calculation with uh, 12 variables and try to remember the relationship between all of them over and over and over again? If you have to complete a report daily or monthly, quarterly, etc. No, you just wanna do something very simple. That's the power of Lambda. So let's go through a couple more here. So the price to earnings ratio is simply the share price divided by earnings per share. And we're gonna calculate our earnings per share by taking the net income for all of 2021 and dividing it by the shares outstanding. We could type lambda, and then in this case, we want three variables, the share price, the net income, and the shares outstanding, because that's how you calculate the earnings per share. It's the net income divided by shares outstanding. So it will be the share price over net income divided by shares outstanding. And then for those values, we're gonna use A5, G5, and E5. Close that. And it's giving me an error. Why is it giving me an error? NI over SO, ah. It would help if I divided my share price by my net income over shares outstanding. There we go. And now if we wanna translate that into a formula that we can reuse, we're gonna go up here and define name. We'll call this our PE ratio. Function to calculate PE ratio. And then we're gonna make that refer to this formula. And then we can use this whenever we want by doing PE ratio and just entering these three values. PE ratio, A5, uh, excuse me, G5, and E5. There we go. Make this a little easier to read here. So in that way, we've just typed in three values and come up with our PE ratio. I'm gonna do another, another example here. For our earnings per share, the earnings per share is the net income divided by outstanding shares. So we'll type lambda, ni, so for shares outstanding, and then ni divided by so. And then for our values, it will be net income, and shares. Oh, and I used the net income for all of 2021 instead of just the net income for the fourth quarter. So make sure you're only doing a quarter at a time. There we go. The EPS for Northern Trust for the fourth quarter of 2021 was 1.96. Let's translate this into a reusable formula. 
call this EPS. Put our lambda right there. And we can reuse this now. Oops. Two, we need two variables, an i and shares outstanding. And there we go. Let's do another one here. Let's do our return on equity. Lambda is going to be an i and se and i divided by SE is the relationship between net income and shareholder equity that gives us a return on equity. For that, we're going to use net income and shareholder equity. Oops. Again, I used my fourth quarter instead of my full year. There we go. Let's turn this into a formula that we can reuse. Call it ROE. Lambda and I SE and I divided by SE. Now we can use our return on equity calc. And there we go. Just need to turn this into a percent. And one final one, let's do the net profit margin. Let's say lambda net income, revenue, and then net income divided by revenue. For this, oops, our net income is G5 and our revenue is in H5. And I used the full year net income when I should have used the net income for the fourth quarter. Let me change that, 24%. Let's change this and translate this into a formula that we can reuse. Call it net profit. Function to calculate profit margin. And let's add our lambda in the refers to. And now we can use this net profit and I revenue. And we'll just have to translate this into a percent. And there we go. So that's how to make five lambda functions, debt to equity, price to earning, earnings per share, return on equity, and profit margin. Now, if we ever wanna use any of these again, they are all right here waiting for us. All right, those were pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let's do one that is slightly more complicated now. Let's see if we can turn the index match into a lambda function. And it turns out we can, and it's not too terribly difficult. In this, in this table that you see in front of you, you've got uh, a list of fruits, and then you've got the number of fruits that I've eaten in the past, I don't know, we'll call it day. If I wanted to turn this into an index match, what I would have to do is index pair, index lookup array, zero, two. There you go. The number of pears I've eaten is six. We wanted to change this to peach, it would be 32. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I think most people understand how the index match works. But what if I don't like the syntax of index match? What if I don't like typing all of this out? What if I wanted to simplify this just a little bit using a lambda function? Turns out we can, we can do that. But what we need to do is we need to specify our index array, our row number, our match, our match lookup value, our lookup array, and the match type. And we can do all of this by doing a lambda, and we'll do uh, 
big, which will represent our index array. And then we'll do value, which will be our variable for um, lookup value. And then we can do little, which will be our match array. And finally, we can do column, which will return the column that we would like to match to. And then the relationship between them will be index big match value and little and then column. C7 to D16 will be our index array or what we're calling big here because in my mind that's the, the big array. Now we need our lookup value and we'll look up the number of strawberries I've eaten, so that's C10. Now we need our match array and the column because we want to return the second column in the index array, which is eaten. And there we go. Now let's translate this into something that we can reuse because we've got our lambda function here. We've got our lambda function that replicates an index match. And this actually ironically looks even uglier than the regular index match, but as soon as we give this a name, it will look better. We're gonna call this index match. And our comment is that this is a function to mimic the index match nested function. We're gonna make it refer to this lambda that we've typed out. Now, here's the magic. When we use this newly created function here, we only have to enter four values, which is really cool. So index, value, well, let's look up uh, blackberries this time. Our little is our match array, and the column we wanna return within the index array is the second one. There we go. So there we have it. We have greatly simplified the kind of complex syntax that it, the nested function of index match typically represents. And we've made this a lot, in my mind, a lot cleaner, a lot easier to use. So that's how you do that one. Let's take a look at one more example to demonstrate the power of uh, lambda functions in Excel. Let's create a lambda function that counts the word in a string text. So let's say if I have a sentence like, I love lambda functions. Now you can quickly count this. This is four words, I love lambda functions. But if you had a paragraph, you'd want something to be able to count uh, words very, very fast, okay? So let's type a function that will calculate the number of words in that text string. And we can do that by typing lambda and our one input here, our one parameter is gonna be text. And how we're gonna use that one parameter is len trim text minus len substitute trim text close close both parentheses plus 1 all right oh there's an error there let's see what i do wrong uh oh I've got an issue with my parentheses. Do that. All right, there we go. So now we have a lambda function that counts the number of words in a text string. So let's make this a name here, make my life a little bit easier. We're gonna define this, we'll just call it word count. Say it's a function to count the number 
of words in a text string. Then we'll say that it refers to this lambda function that we just wrote. And now let's make a new text string. I love micro soft Excel and how powerful it is. So we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine words in this, but let's use our newly created Lambda function, okay? So we're gonna say word count, and this is in cell J5, sorry, J6. There we go, there's nine words. So you can see how powerful uh, Lambda functions are. They're really a cool new addition to, uh, to Microsoft Excel. This really blurs the lines between what's Excel proper and what's code. I mean, this really puts an enormous amount of power into the hands of, um, of the average Excel user. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching today. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the chat below. And as always, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.